a quick note on how to get into the Solara charge controller for the solar panel on our boat. First of all you remove these four screws, you can remove it from the boat, disconnect the wires from the solar panel and the battery, then this cover comes off. Now when you look at the circuit board, if you want to get it out, you'll see there's a tab here. Don't try and put something in and leave that tab out. I nearly ended up breaking, you can see where I've been going, you, you'll end up breaking the plastic. It's quite an old controller and this, the plastic is brittle. Um, what you need to do Get a screwdriver, take these screws out, which hold in the wires. There's the screws out. Now, if you look at these posts, which are embedded in the plastic, what we need to do is, they're held in with little tabs here, you just see that there. What we need to do is lever these out with a screwdriver so that we can push up, push them up and then get these connectors out from this side of the um, device rather than trying to lever this out. So just push them away a little bit like that. They just move a little bit over like that. Just create a little gap. And then from this side or possibly this side you can then Get the screwdriver under there, and there's one, I've levered it up, that one, lever them up about halfway. I'm just to lever it up, so lever them up about halfway, and then Move these screws out of the way. And then take these, what you want to do is push them underneath the plastic one by one. There's the first one. There's the second one. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. And now I can hear it. It's almost free. Push these up again. And there we go. That's the circuit board removed, intact, and there's the connectors. Now, what was wrong with this solar controller was that um, it would always show red. In other words, it would always say that the battery was on charge. So what the purpose of this solar controller is to keep the battery charged, you know, like a trickle controller. But the LED was always red, never turned to green, and it was always charging the batteries, I noticed. So, I don't know if this was a contributing factor, but... One of our batteries developed a short circuit. There were, well, we've got two batteries in parallel, lead-acid batteries, traditional lead-acid batteries. I mean, this is quite an old solar controller. So, um, I think that led to the battery going wrong. So, what I want to do first is check whether that... LED is working. If it's working correctly, then 
what is wrong with the solar controller. Well, you can see, in fact, I've already affected a repair here on this resistor. So I'll just quickly go over what I did and how I think I fixed it. So first, the thing I did was check to see if that diode or LED is working correctly. If I flip it over the other side, this is the LED. You can actually see I desoldered it at one point. So essentially what we have is this. We've got a diode like this. And it has a common connection to the negative terminal. And we've got another diode or LED light emitting diode like this, where if this is positive or this is positive, the diode conducts. In this case, if there's a positive uh, voltage, then we're going to get red light. And if the other side is positive with respect to the negative, we're going to get green light. If both sides are positive, we're going to get red and green. And essentially that what looks like a single LED is actually two LEDs and this is the package here. The middle track connects to the negative of both uh, terminals. So if I put my meter and put it into diode test, which I've just done here, like this, there's diode test, and then connect, this is going to be difficult to see, the positive lead to the outside and the negative onto the ground, or the negative side of the battery, you can see that I'm getting a voltage drop of 1.819 and you probably, it's almost impossible to see but that LED is lighting up green. If I put it the other way, so the positive on this side here and the negative on here, let me just do that again, the LED lights up red and we get a voltage drop of 1.7. So that LED seems to be working. If I just do it the other way, <laughs> I also get a voltage drop of 1.8, but that's um, in circuit. Oops. Sorry, I get a voltage drop of 2.064 on both sides, but that's in circuit. If I take it out of circuit, which I did before, then you get open circuit and you get a voltage drop closer to 0.7. Right, so the LED seems to be working. I then connected it up to a battery. Right, that's I've connected to a battery. So I've got a motorcycle battery, lead acid battery. Um, and then I've got the voltmeter here. What I did was I connected up the positive and the negative of the battery side. And I've got my probe here. So now if I probe here, I get 0 0.676 on the voltmeter. And on this side, I get 1.228 and the LED is red. Now, that's not what I was getting before. I was getting a very low voltage on this side and 8 volts on the other side. 
And then now, the way I determined the fault was, if you look on this side of the board, you see there's a chip there. If you look up the chip, it is an LM2902 operational amplifier package. And so basically what I did was, if we look at output 4, which is pin 14, there's two inputs, the plus input and the minus input. And pin 12 is the one we're interested in, which has got 0 volts. Pin 13 had about 3.8 volts. If I then trace that circuit, it was just coming from the supply and a voltage divider over R17 and R15. And the nominal values were 130 kilo ohms, looking at the resistors codes, and 62 kilo ohms. So working that out should have been about 3.875 volts, whereas in fact I was getting nothing. The other thing I noticed was the resistance of that resistor was coming out to be 250 ohms rather than 130 kilo ohms. So in so what I did was I then removed that resistor and checked its value out of circuit and I found it was open circuit. So this resistor here I'm talking about um, that resistor had was open circuit. So basically what I did was I replaced that resistor with two 68, I didn't have a 130 kilo ohm resistor. I've got uh, two 68 kilo ohm resistors in the series there, which makes it um, 136 kilo ohms, which should be close enough. And now I'm getting reasonable voltages on that um, LED and I'm hoping that it will now turn green when the battery is sufficiently charged, although I haven't checked that. Time to um, reassemble the controller and put it back in the boat. Just for reference, here's the exact model of the controller. Um, so now it's just the reverse of the uh, disassembly. Let's take this, slot it in to here, but let's put the posts in. Now, there's little tabs there, so it's better to use the sharp corner and put them in in this orientation so that they will catch. So what I do is I'm going to put them in like that. In this orientation with the sharp corner on the right. You can see that the negative ones are more corroded and I've tried to clean them up of course. They were much more corroded than that. Um, but remember it's not that that's making contact with the wire. This is just for holding in. It's just for holding in the spring connector. So put this... Ah, actually, what you need to do is... Put these on like that. Yeah, so now put these over the terminals to start with, then put that in like that, and then you can push down the terminals into the correct position. Just 
using the screwdriver. Push that down. Push these down. Like that. And then we should be able to push that underneath the plastic. Like that. And like that. There we go, so that they feed through to this side. That looks, and then that cover fits over the top. Somehow, that's it, and it's ready to reinstall back in the boat and check to see that it's charging correctly the battery. Now I took the repaired circuit board to the boat um, and connected it up to my batteries, which we'd replace with new batteries. Um, and disappointingly, it showed a red uh, indicator showing that the it was charging the batteries. So, um, what I took it back and had another look at it, and I realised that the value of the resistor I'd put in here, which I'd assumed was um, 136 ohms, would be close enough to the 130 nominal was too high and I had to lower it down to 128.9, uh, 126.6 kilo ohms. So now um, with this, which I constructed from three resistors, um, a 47 kilo ohm resistor, 47 kilo ohm resistor and a 33 kilo ohm resistor which nominally give 127 kilo ohms so now if I connect the bat if I connect it up to my motobat battery which I've now charged up so that it's now giving a nominal voltage of 12.86 volts if I now connect that up I don't know if you can see that on screen, but the LED is now showing green. Now what I want to do is connect it up to another battery which needs charged and show that it will be red. So here I've got our old HB030 Halfords battery which only after charging has a nominal voltage of 12.23 volts. That's because the cells are not in a very good state. And that's why we've re replaced it. So now, if I connect this up to the circuit board, like this, we can see that the LED is clearly red. So now, hopefully, I've got it fixed and it will switch on correctly when the battery voltage drops. So here I am on the boat and this is where the solar controller goes. So now it's a question of taking these things off and reinstalling it back. I've just connected it up and annoyingly, I don't know if you can see this, it's difficult to tell because it's quite a bright day, but there is a tinge of red in it. There's also green in it. But I'm hoping 
it's going to turn more and more green as I leave it because it's a nice bright sunny day. I'm getting 19 volts on the solar panel, which is these two, and 12.68 on the battery. So let's leave it for a while and see if it turns yes. green. Yes. As you can see now, it's turned solidly green just in the time I took to attach the controller back onto the uh, wood there. So, job done.